what is a revenue neutral carbon tax? And, you know, in my personal opinion, it is the best way to address the climate crisis that's in front of us. It's amazing. And we're going to talk about exactly what it is right here. So for starters, let's consider climate change. Scientists agree that one of the biggest contributions to climate change is the amount of carbon we emit. If we could reduce the amount of carbon we emit, we might be able to avert climate change hitting our future. Because right now, it's not looking too good. Climate change, yeah, lots of uncomfortable stuff's going to happen, like extinction of species, the globe is going to warm, we might not have an ice sheet in the North Pole. All that's, like, not good. But let, let's even bring it to some very concrete stuff right in front of you. For starters, there's going to be some costs associated with this. There are going to be costs that are going to be imposed on all of us, including you. Asthma, there's more dust out there. Uh, food costs will be higher because farmers are going to have a harder time growing. There's going to be more droughts. More of our taxes will be going to disaster relief. Uh, ins insurance premiums for properties will go up. There's lots of ways that costs are going to actually go up with climate change. And you know who's going to be paying them? You and me. That's who. All right, but what if we could solve this with the beauty of the market? Right now, all the things that are appearing in our climate and then costing us money aren't reflected in when we buy a plane ticket, when we buy a car, when we drive and buy gas, we turn on a light bulb. What is reflected is simply the cost of producing carbon to make these things, but not the cost of carbon on the planet. What if we could put the cost of carbon here into the products we buy. Suddenly now we're buying products that are better for the world and work for the world, thus saving climate easily. Saving climate with a simple, elegant solution. So, carbon comes out of the ground in the form of coal, oil, natural gas. And we propose with a carbon tax, tax carbon right at the source, right when it comes out of the ground, at the production well, at the oil refinery, at the coal mine. And then the beauty of the market can figure out where all the costs need to go. No need for subsidies. Oil is produced, it's refined, it's turned into jet fuel, it's sold to an airport, it's sold to an airplane, and that price goes into a ticket price, meaning that the price we're actually paying for a plane ride reflects the price of carbon. And this will happen for all of the things all over the market. And suddenly some products that will cost more, and some products like maybe more efficient light bulbs, for instance, will cost a lot less without any need for subsidies. They'll just naturally be cheaper. One of the uncomfortable things about this is, you know what? Life's tough and we're sometimes getting right by. We can't necessarily afford an increase in our gas bill. We're barely making ends meet. So that's where the beauty of a revenue neutral carbon tax comes in. What if we were to take all of the money that we're taxing and recycle it immediately into a giant bucket of money and then from there, distribute it equally among American households, giving everyone a carbon check every month. Just think of that. You open up your mailbox and you get your carbon check from the revenue neutral carbon fee that the U.S. has implemented, thereby balancing the extra costs you have. Now, every, every household will get the, exactly the same check. So, by our estimations, two-thirds of American households will actually come out ahead in this scheme. There will be more dividends than the actual increased costs that they're paying. The only way this is going to happen if, is if there's political will for it. And that means that everybody needs to agree on it. It needs to be a nonpartisan uh, proposal, Republicans and Democrats. Republicans are really interested in something that does not expand the size of government, and that's what this does. It's a carbon tax, but it recycles all the money immediately back to the people, not expanding the, the size of government. One other important part about this is how does it protect American businesses? So one thing that businesses love is predictability. Uncertainty costs money. And a revenue-neutral carbon tax is exactly that. It shows exactly how much the tax will be year to year, and businesses can predict it. When, when businesses don't have predictability, they do things like putting off necessary improvements. If they don't know what environmental regulations are going to be two years from now, they're not going to necessarily invest in a new plant. They're just going to keep running the old power plant that they've been running. This gives them predictability so they can make secure investments. So there's one other component of protecting American businesses, and that's when you import something that used oil, like you import some oil, that's not paying the same tax. So to protect American businesses at home, 
There's a tax levied at the border to make sure that American businesses are playing in a fair playing field inside the U.S. and outside of the U.S. And here's the beauty of this entire scheme. It'll take a lot more than just the U.S. implementing a carbon tax to actually shift what's happening with the climate and reduce these costs. It's going to take other countries too. In our proposal, the border adjustment's only put there if, a, if another country does not have its own carbon tax. If they put their own carbon tax in place, then the border adjustment is dissolved and they get to keep all their own revenues at home. Carbon tax spreads around the world and we have a world system that will actually lead to a sustainable climate. That's what a revenue neutral carbon tax is and that's what CCL is up to.